All right, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about some advice that I gave one of my sales reps. I have sales reps that are brand new and they're just getting into the game of sales. And I have other sales reps that have been around the park for a little bit of time. You know, they've taken a couple walks around the block. And that being said, I have earned 40 to $60,000 a month as a sales rep. And I also worked as a sales consultant with a guy named Grant Cardone. And that was actually the first time I ever did sales was enterprise sales, B2B. And I'm just gonna say this, compared to what guys are doing now, that in environment and what we were doing, dude, it was it was hardcore and what the guys are doing now, it's very soft. And this is the concept that I want to talk about today is your client is right about how they feel, but they are not always right about the right solution. That is why they're potentially looking to become a client. So sometimes you have to put them in their place, respectfully put them in their place and actually check them on what they're saying. For example, if a client tells me that, dude, he's not gonna move forward because of some BS reason, I'm gonna call him out on that. And there's certain ways that you should do that. And there's definitely ways that you shouldn't do that. What does that really mean? What that means is when you jump on a sales call, you should get trained up to the point where you are the advisor. You're the person that knows more than them. That means you should actually learn more than them and be in a spot where you do know more than them about what you're selling so that you can come in as the expert, the advisor, the person that's gonna actually coach them and hold that frame throughout the call. Because if you don't hold that frame and you try to do the route of just being a friend, just being somebody that's very personable and just being someone that they like as a buddy, what's gonna happen is, is they're gonna BS you like a friend or a buddy. But if it's your coach, it's your advisor, it's the person that you get counsel from, that is gonna create a different dynamic and it's gonna be a place where you can actually tell the guy, look, can I get real with you? And by asking permission, if you can get real with the person, this will put you in a position where you can actually take control of the call and give them that raw feedback. So for example, on a call, I have told a client, hey, can I get real with you? What you're doing for marketing right now sucks. What you're doing for marketing right now is putting you in a position where you're scraping by, you're on the brink of poverty. What you're doing right now in your sales processes is making it so that you are literally leaving hundreds of thousands of dollars a month on the table in your company every single month. And obviously if it's a guy just getting started, it's like, look, what you're doing right now is putting you in the spot where you're showing up to a position where you were getting overwork and underpaid for what you're doing. And by being able to get real with them, you're ultimately holding that frame of the advisor, the counselor. But what I find really helpful is to one, set this frame at the beginning of the call. If the client is being hard to deal with at the beginning of the call, I would make sure that you confront them on that and do it in a way that's respectful and do it in a way that's not gonna break, you know, affinity, break the communication cycle that you should follow when you're communicating with people. So one way I like to do that is with pre-frames. And a pre-frame is simply when you set the expectations of how the call is gonna go and you let them know that, hey, on this call, we're gonna do A, B, and C, and this is how it's gonna go. And one method that helps when you're dealing with clients that are maybe hard to work with is I do give them some information, don't get me wrong. I'll give them a high level overview, but I make sure that I capture the data and information that allows me to understand, is this person in a position where they are open to change, they're open to getting help, and they actually want this. It's a priority for them in their life. And by doing that, I'm going to be in a place where I could actually do a deal. By doing that, I'm actually going to be able to ask the right questions to pre-handle the objections. I need to think about it. I need to talk to my partner. You know, I've already done something like this. I don't know if it's going to work for me. This just isn't a priority. Call me back next quarter. Call me back next year. Whatever it is, I want to go ahead and start to pre-handle those objections during the call by asking the right questions and ultimately getting the right information so that I can really go ahead and lay down the hammer gently at the end of the call. And when I say lay down the hammer, I mean, there comes a point at the end of the call where I am prepared and I've been collecting bullets. I've been collecting, you know, I have, you know, the sniper, I have the handgun, I have the machine gun, I have all these weapons, these bullets that I've acquired throughout the call so that at the end, dude, I can get real with the guy and, and actually make or break the call. And there is types of clients where you do need to make or break the call, especially when you have people that have not made a decision like this and it's been in their life for a long period of time. So if I have a client that has been thinking about a decision or a solution for months at a time, sometimes even years, I'm going to go ahead and basically go the distance and do what we call make or break. When I say make or break, 
week, I mean that, dude, I'm prepared to go through 20, 30 objections and this call is going to either end with a deal or it's going to end with him jumping off the call. For some of you, you have to get this skill set down because if you do not learn how to confront those objections, they're really just BS. They're just BS. They're smoke screens where they're just throwing things at you. But really what's happening is they're being reactive and they're thinking about their past experiences when they've actually failed in life, in business before, and they're making a decision through that lens versus making the decision of them being that person that ultimately is a winner. What I mean by that is if logically on paper, your solution can solve a very big problem for them and it makes sense, it will help them, it will put them in a better position when they go through the product, dude, it makes sense for them to move forward. And if you do not sell them that they need to overcome their old operating basis that led them to this point, you're ultimately not doing them any justice and you're not being that counsel an advisor because good coaches, they push people to the finish line. I don't know about you guys, but for me, I was a D1 athlete. So when I was an athlete, I had a coach that made me wake up, you know, at 5 a.m. to run. I had a coach that would have me do the extra laps after practice. I had a coach that would help me go and push through and go to the extra practice after practice. And that's a part of you being an expert is telling someone, look, I understand that you want to make a decision like your old self, but that's not what's gonna get you X, Y, Z solution. And sometimes you have to call people out on this and it's okay to do that. Now do it respectfully, but do it in a way where you are ultimately gonna push them through the finish line so that they actually get the solution and the product so that they actually have a fighting chance. So the next question is, what does this actually look like and how do you actually do this appropriately so that you're not you know, just getting people pissed off and you know, getting bad reviews for the company? I'm gonna go over a high level overview of how this works, but it does happen at the beginning of the call, you have to set the frame the right way. One way to set the frame right way is to sublimely answer statements that give you authority as well as your company. So for example, a statement I might say is, hey, you know, one thing that we've learned after working with over 4,000 entrepreneurs is that most entrepreneurs fall into this one trap of A, B, and C. That statement is giving our company authority and I'm actually starting to teach that person something. And when you could teach someone something, you are actually helping them and you're hopefully giving them a realization. And when you're giving someone a realization, you're actually showing them that you can help them in real time by helping them increase their levels of awareness. And throughout the call, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I check off all the boxes so that I could pre-handle as many objections as I can, but ideally all of the major ones. And I've boiled it down to these three things. If I can get people to say, I need help right now, I need a change right now, and it's a priority for me right now, most of the objections can be handled by getting the person to say that they actually have that. They have that. I'm not saying that for them. So I need them to say, yes, I need help. I need them to say, yes, I need change. I need them to say, yes, it's a priority for me. And when they say it, it's a fact. That's why it's called the fact finding. If I say it, it's my opinion. If I ask them, it's a fact when it's coming out their mouth and people tend to hold their ground on things that they say and they'll back up their points of view. And that's a part of the psychology of being able to grab these bullets, beginning of the call, middle of the call. So at the end, you know, I can release them when I have to drop the hammer. In the demo, when you're actually presenting Presenting the product, what most people do is they end their fact finding at the beginning of the call. But what you want to do is you want to keep the fact finding going throughout the call. And any bullets that you did not acquire at the beginning of the call, you keep a tab on that. And you know, like, man, I asked the guy this. I asked the guy, let's just say, um, I have a client that potentially uh, has had this problem for a long time. I might ask a question like this and curious, what's different now? You know, where does this at on the priority board for you right now? The client says, dude, at the top of my priority board and it's something that I've been, you know, having trouble with for a long time. That's good. Like I'd want him to say that, but let's just say that he, he doesn't really, you know, go deep into that. I might circle back around in the demonstration and get him to expand on it at the appropriate point. So let's say that there's a point in the demonstration where I actually was showing a part or explaining a part of my process. Right. And I was, you know, going through a, a portion of the presentation. Let's just say, I'll use this as an example. One thing we help people do is we do help people understand how to properly build uh, a sales team and put in structure 
structures in place so that they can elevate to that position of being a true CEO, of being a true founder. So they have a team that's going out there and they're not just, you know, working another high paying job. That's one thing we help people do. So if I was talking about, let's just say the sales aspect and building a sales team, and I'm kind of going through my presentation on that specific point, it would look something like this. So John, when we help you do this, we have to make sure that you know how to attract and retain talent because talented people aren't gonna go work for somebody that they think is a, you know, a bum. They wanna work for someone that actually has some value to add. So we'll give you our exact scripts that we use to recruit talent and run them through our frameworks. Then we'll also show you how to source this talent so that you know exactly how to get talented people in your company that could actually hold that position of doing sales for you in the same way that you have a pipeline for getting customers, you have a pipeline of talent. So for us, we have over 400 people every single week apply to work with us. And I'm just curious, John, I know you said earlier this at the top of your priority board, what inspired that change for you? Like what helped you have that realization that you need to put in place, you know, a sales infrastructure to get talent and retain them and be able to actually, you know, have somebody run that portion of the company for you. The client's gonna respond and depending on his answer, I might go ahead and have to follow up with level two or level three questions that allow me to actually go deeper and have him really explain like, dude, why does he need this right now? And that concept applies to really all of the objections where I can go ahead and pre-handle them before the close and get him to expand during the demonstration. And that's a that's an area where in the demonstration, I am giving more information and I am giving him some, some insight to what we do. So I, I will have permission and I will have the ability to go deeper in the fact finding. And that's huge because if you can master that skill set, by the time you get to the close, you will have so many different reasons to why now, why he needs this help and why he needs this change. And that kind of lays us to the last area, which is the actual close. And in the close, that's where I will run through the basic process and ask him questions. And I, I use what I call sequences. I have sequences of questions that again, further lead that person to the conclusion that they want to move forward, that they need to move forward. They're saying it. But when it gets to the very end and I've ran through those baseline sequences, which can take me through usually 10 objections, that's when we start dropping hammers and we start getting real with the person and we'll use stories along with just flat out asking the person, is it okay if I you know, even give you a little bit of feedback on what I've learned after working with seven to eight figure entrepreneurs? Whatever the statement is, I'll, I'll have a statement that allows me to go in and just call them out on the things that have been holding them back. And when you really look at that, that is persuasion, persuasion defined, the ability to help someone see something through, through reason, through logic. And if you can really master this concept that I'm telling you, you will get more deals, you will close more clients, but more importantly, you will help more people work through those barriers that have been holding them back from getting the solutions that your company offers and actually be doing them a favor.